Hi, this is Dare to Do Motivation, and these are the real teachings of Buddha. Everyone knows Buddha, and everyone knows the journey he went outside into the world and into his self to find salvation, to find his place in the world, to lose his self, and to awake into life. But not many know the rules that Buddha set up for society, the guidelines he created. Number one, freedom of thought. At times referred to as the Buddha's charter of free inquiry, this discourse was given by the Buddha to the Brahmin Kalamas at Kezaputta 2,500 years ago, preaching against blind belief in Buddha, gave prominence to and encouraged the spirit of free inquiry and independence of thought and action, subject to sound judgment. He trained his disciples in the art of questioning, as well as in the finer points of debate and discussion, pointing out the dangers of Havazard thinking. The Buddha teaches the Kalamas the art of reasoning for the sole purpose of arriving at true understanding of the Buddha's teaching of the Four Noble Truths. Number two, towards human dignity. Sunita was a scavenger born into a so-called outcaste community. On meeting the Buddha, on his alms round one day, the humble youth prostrated himself before the master in adoration. Asking for ordination, he is taken to the temple, where he soon becomes worthy of the highest obeisance of both Deva and Brahma gods. Thus the Buddha teaches that a man becomes neither a Brahmin nor a low caste by birth, but by deeds alone. And you see in your life, whether you are born on the streets or into a noble house, your true worth is set by you alone, by your deeds, by your morals, by your thoughts and actions. Number three, equality of women. It was the Buddha who first gave women their rightful place in a society which had earlier ostracized them, even to the extent of treating the birth of a girl as an inauspicious event. Knowing that being a woman was no bar to her attaining the highest fruition of sainthood, the Buddha permitted the ordination of women as bhikkhunis. Further, the establishment of a bhikkhuni sasana, order of nuns, by the Buddha, was the first of its kind in the history of the world. You see in life, these days also, in some societies, in some countries, if a girl is born, it is frowned upon, it is not seen as beneficiary, not taking in gratitude what God gives you in life, which presence he gives in your offspring. So already Buddha knew that life is sacred, no matter if your baby is a son or a girl. Number four, human freedom. In the time of the Buddha, it was common for both men and women to enter into services in rich households due to their extreme poverty. In fact, this traffic in human slaves was very common at the time, even though it was contraindicated for a follower of the Buddha. The state of slavery that existed at the time is well illustrated by the story of the slave girl Rajumala, who worked for a very wicked mistress who treated her without any mercy, even for the slightest fault. On this picture here, the Buddha admonished both servant and mistress, and teaching them the doctrine, bestows permanent peace on both of them. You see in life, as the World Cup is looming across the corner next year in 2022, we know of modern day slaves building the infrastructure for this tournament. People from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Kenya, Nigeria, and the Philippines being treated as slaves with their passports confiscated and unworthy human conditions which they live in and being treated subhuman. Slavery still exists today and even though money runs the world, let your hearts also run the world. Number five, ministering to the sick. In spite of the fact that the study and practice of medicine and surgical science 
has advanced to a great extent by the Buddha's time. Hardly any attention was paid to nursing or caring for the sick. Putigatta Tissatera was a monk who was stricken by a skin disease, which spread covering his whole body, with a mass of ulcerating matter. Lying unattended by the fellow monks, his condition worsens. The Buddha, going to the stricken monk, who now lies dangerously ill, bathes him in warm water with the help of Ananda and cleans his robes. Having made him comfortable, the Buddha expounds the teaching to him, explaining the true nature of the human body. Enlightened by the discourse, the Tera becomes an Arahant. The Buddha then addresses the other monks on the ennobling task of caring for the sick. Accepting the compassionate exhortation of the Master and following his noble example, the laity started to build wards for sick monks in all large monasteries. Later, King Damasoka was to build hospitals, not only for the public, but also for sick animals. Hence the honor for the establishment of the first hospitals should be given to the Buddhists. You see in life, in an ever more aging society across the world, it is important that the profession of a health carer, of a carer for the elderly and the sick, gains in respect gains in income and becomes one of the true pillars of our worldly society. Number six, psychic therapy. The Buddha speaking on the mind has also spoken on mental disorders and on the treatment of psychic ailments. The Buddha has traced sorrow as one of the chief causes leading to the arising of mental disturbances. On the death of her only son, Kisagotami loses control of her senses and in her madness goes in search of medicine for her dead child. Failing all else, she appeals to the Buddha, who, realizing that nothing would convince her until her mental equilibrium has been restored, sends her on an errand to get him a few mustard seeds from a house where there has been no death. Unable to accomplish the master's request, she comes to the conclusion that death is inevitable and that her only son too had succumbed to it. You see in life, already Buddha traced sorrow as one of the chief causes leading to mental disturbances. So don't keep your sorrow to yourself. If you feel sad, share it with your friends and family. Seek professional help if you must and try to dig to the root of your sadness. Look for a smile in your heart and translate it to your whole self. Number seven, compassion to animals. In the Buddha's time, there were various animal sacrifices taking place in India. Innocent animals were killed as offerings on sacrificial altars to appease the gods for man's happiness both here and hereafter. The Buddha, however, showed man that it was impossible to obtain happiness for oneself by causing suffering to others. And that the followers of the Buddha, if they were so, should avoid making animal sacrifices. At that time, the king of Kosala had seen 16 terrifying dreams in a single night and was in great fear. To avert the evil influence of these dreams, a great animal sacrifice with the killing of thousands of animals was arranged in accordance with the advice given by the Brahmins. Hearing of this, the Buddha advises the king against such a sacrifice, thus saving the lives of all those doomed creatures. From that day to this, no taking of life, however small, is involved in any ceremony of the Buddha's followers. You see, in life, all creatures, all living beings, deserve to be treated with dignity and not cruelty. Death should not be wasted, and we should only take from nature what we need. This was part one of the real Buddha teachings to be continued. Thank you so much for watching and stay blessed.